Welcome, welcome, my friends, to the first ever Nature's Armor Fest. Yes, from snails to crocodiles, everyone will be able to show off their natural protection, carefully nurtured through millennia of evolution. Hey, I wonder what's in that futuristic looking box visible behind the curtain, but I guess we'll find out later. And the first to come out on stage is the abalone. If there's an animal that's afraid of next to nothing, it's this one. A humble mollusk like this grows a shell that can withstand a lot of damage without causing any inconvenience to the soft creature inside. The sea snail carefully gathers its armor from hair-thin bricks of calcium carbonate, or simply chalk. Normally, chalk is brittle stuff. You can break it with your bare hands without much effort. But abalones are crafty. They create a thick wall, the structure of which makes it both lightweight and really tough. Look how excited the scientists in the first row are! They're looking forward to meeting the abalone after the show and learn all about its shell to create a brand new type of armor for humans. Or they're interested in lunch. Our next participant is a native of the Amazon River. The Arapaima, probably the toughest fish in the world. It can breathe air and live out of the water for a whole day. That's how it's here in the first place, and grows as long as two average people are tall. But its most astonishing feature is its natural armor. Arapaima's scales protect it from piranhas lurking in the same waters. Those fish may be small, but their bite is powerful and teeth sharp. Arapaima scales have a hard outer casing and soft, skinny inner layer that allows the armor to be bent and deformed, but never broken. The third toughest, but only by number, is the ironclad beetle. It has a very apt name. Its carapace is so hard it can withstand the weight of a grown-up person. This particular specimen boasts of being run over by a car once and living to tell the tale. The shell can play a cruel joke on the beetle itself, though. When enough pressure is applied, the carapace can flatten the insect's innards while staying intact itself. Sounds like a crush to me. Entomologists and insect collectors say they have to use a hammer to drive a needle into the shell, and sometimes the needle bends. Now, when you think of snail armor, you usually imagine the shell. But one look at our next contestant, and you'll understand why it's only half the thing. The scaly foot snail lives deep under the ocean surface, near hot vents in the sea floor. It does wear a shell, but it's also protected from below by hard scales made of iron sulfide. And in between the helmet and the iron scales, there sits a slimy critter, looking like a fully armed knight, and a devoted one at that. The snail doesn't really eat. All its nutrition provided by bacteria living on and inside its body. Yummo! Rolling on the stage is the armored paragon, the pangolin. Its scales look much like those of an armadillo, overlapping each other and making a perfectly fitting set. Oh look, something's rushing on the stage! It's a lion! Alright, who let the lion out? The pangolin reacts lightning fast, rolling into a ball and lying still. The big cat lunges at it, but its teeth can't penetrate the armor. Whew! The stagehands are now leading the lion back off the stage. Our participant is safe. But that was an awesome demonstration of the pangolin survival skills. Although its scales are made of keratin, like human nails and hair, they provide the animal with an excellent degree of protection. The following contestant is brought onto the stage in a big water tank. It's a cuttlefish! Not to be cuddled with, it's a close relative of squids and octopuses. Now I hear muffled laughs among the audience, and no wonder! They came here to see the best armor nature can provide, and these critters don't have any. Or do they? In fact, their armor is inside the body, and it's called cuddle bone. It's not even bone, though, but a porous chalk shell that protects the cuttlefish's insides and allows it to regulate the depth of swimming. The pores in the shell let in water and gas, and when the cuttlefish wants to sink, it allows more water into its cuddle bone, pumping it out with gas to go back up. A sinkhole opens up in the bottom of the tank, and the cuttlefish scrams to make way for a cunning predator, the alligator gar. Like the Arapaima, it can grow to an impressive size, and this one is surely one of the biggest of its kind. Look at those teeth! 
Alligator gars are ambush predators that lie in wait and then quickly attack the unwary fish. But this gar is here to show off its amazing scales. Unlike in other fish, they're thick and covered in something like enamel. Such scales provide a great level of protection from predators, and alligator gars can take on a lot of beating before they're finally defeated. With a flourish, the gar slings down the sinkhole as well, and something big shows up instead. Ow! That noise! It's the bony plates on the side of our next participant scraping against the walls of the tunnel. Meet the beluga sturgeon, the biggest of its family. It may not be covered in armor-like scales all over, but the five rows of the plates I mentioned, called scoots, give it ample defense against anything that's dumb enough to attack this giant of a fish. Not every predator has a mouth wide enough to get between these rows, you know. And even the strongest of underwater hunters can break their teeth trying to take a bite out of this sturgeon. As the huge fish pushes itself back into the tunnel, oh, that's scraping again. I wonder if you noticed something else that was in the tank with it. Look closer, it has a very distinctive and recognizable shape. Yes, it's a conch shell, similar to one you probably have at your place, giving off the sounds of the ocean when put to the ear. This one's inhabited, though. Conchs are sea snails, and their shells are not only very pretty, but also really tough. Like other sea snails, they build their shells out of chalk and hide inside them when in danger. This helps a lot, since not many predators have teeth strong enough to bite through the thick mobile armor set. Hey, the scientists are agitated again! The chiton is entering the stage through the sinkhole. This crafty mollusk has a very versatile shell unlike any other species. The upper side of it is made of loosely connected hard plates, and below them, circling the body of the chiton, is a girdle covered in tough overlapping scales. Such a structure allows the mollusk to move around uneven surfaces, like rocks, while being ready to stop and prepare for an attack. Upon impact, the shell and scales become firm and don't let the chiton's soft body be harmed. The scientists are jotting down the specifics. They want to create armor like this for humans, too. Finally, the water tank is hauled away from the stage, and our next, and largest so far, contestant slithers onto it. The public is hushed. It's a Nile crocodile, an immense reptile that's only slightly changed since its appearance millions of years ago. The croc also has a tough set of body armor. The reptilian scales are actually an exoskeleton that serves for protection. The croc snaps at the spectators close to it. Oh, the beast is both heavily armored and extremely aggressive. Meanwhile, a prop brings an ancient suit of armor made of crocodile skin to the stage. It was made in the 3rd century CE and provided pretty good protection from sharp things. Oops, better not make the croc here nervous. But the scaly beast is agitated already. It hisses and snaps, but slowly backs away and off the stage. Something heavy is thrashing in the box we noticed at the beginning. At last, one of its walls gives in and falls with a crash. And what we see stomping onto the stage is an ankylosaurus. This dinosaur with ankles is big and hulking, with a large thick skull and robust armor plates covering all its body. But probably the most notorious feature is the tail club it used to fight off predators. By differing accounts, the armor of an ankylosaurus is much thicker than anything found in modern animals and could take quite an impact before giving in. What a magnificent monster! And what ankles it has! <laughs>